Son, and the Lord. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever lives and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer lives, that he shall stand at the last day upon the earth. Shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself?
Lord, thou has given. I'm sorry. Lord, thou has been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thought has formed earth and world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest men to destruction and sayest, Return, ye children of men, for thousands of years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it passed, and as watched in the night. Thou carriest them away as with flood, they are as sleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourish and grow up, in the evening it is cut down and withered. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our inequities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are three score and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thy anger, even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. This is Corinthians first. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither that corruption inherit corruption. Behold, I assume you a mystery. You shall not see, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at last the trumpet, trump of the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be rise incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must be put on incorruption, and this mortal must be put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall we be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting, O oh, grave? Where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Well, let's give her a round of applause. Now we have a selection by Miss Angela and Jenny and Friend.
Better take the confidence. will lead you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise 
praise the Lord. Just want to say, send our condolences to Carla, Nishka, and Todd. Just want to remember our beautiful, bright-eyed Amber. We got a mischief and trouble, Chantel and Kia and Peggy and Stephen, all the cousins who could not be here today. We want to let you know that we stand with the family. We're praying for you in times like these. I don't want to say anything because I don't have the words to say, but I know the one that is able to get you through this, and his name is Jesus. And we're going to constantly be before God and just praying for your family and to everyone here. Just love people while you have the opportunity. Say what it is you need to say. Hug, kiss, love, and say what you need to say because for all of us, this is an appointment that each and every one of us one day will have to make. Amen? So we want to be ready, amen, when it is your time to stand before the throne of grace, amen. But just want to say to the family again, we're going to miss Amber. We love her. We tore up the grove. We went to Virick and over there in Charles Terrace and through Tucker and you name it, we were there. But we're going to miss this beautiful soul. But it is not goodbye, but it is see you later. God bless. You see, we have the same DNA, and we were cut from the same fiber. We grew up, and distance separated us, as in the case with most siblings. We had our own set of friends, and our own set of goals for our lives, but that still didn't change the fact that we were sisters. And through this journey for our life, we experienced many escapades, some of joy, some of sadness, but all of love. When we were much younger, I can recall the arduous task of Coney Amber's hair, because it was so thick. The lengthy time to finish it, however, allowed us to bond as sisters. She would always tell jokes that would have me crack a cup. And I oftentimes wondered if she would be a public speaker because she had such a way of captivating one's attention. Amber had a character and a personality that was unique like none other. She had many hats, and I was the beneficiary of some of those traits that she possessed. One was being a walking road map. I remember when I first started driving in Miami, she taught me how to understand the road system. She would say, look, Carla, this is all you have to remember. Streets run north to south, and avenues run east to west. So if the address of a place is, for example, 7834, then you would have to go down to 78th Street. To this day, I still carry that lesson with me. Today, 
and whose voice is silent, and whose memories will help us through as we dearly miss her. She was a reliable co-driver. Whenever we went on family vacations to Tennessee or Chicago, Amber was the one awake in the wee hours of the morning, keeping the drivers company. A beautiful, a beautiful black soul was who she was. However, it would be remiss if I did not speak to you on this matter. It is with a heavy and grateful heart that I stand before you today, but with a blessed lively hope that God is able to keep that which he has committed unto us against this day. So I encourage you to make Christ the center of your joy, to seek him, to call upon his face while he is near. For you see, Paul said unto the Ephesians, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, not against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Secondly, I thank you for your outpouring love and support, and I ask that you would keep me and my family in your prayers, that God will sustain us through this most difficult time. Amber's no longer here with us. Her voice is gone, but, and her earthly tabernacle has been dissolved. However, she now has a building of God and house made not with hands, eternal in the heavens. Amber, may you rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Come on, let's give everyone who said such wonderful words. Samika and Miss Ashanti Gibson, the cousins. And then following them, we'll have our like, acknowledgments from the staff of Range.
that he is still in control and that there is no pain that Jesus can't feel. There's no hurt that he cannot heal. But all things work according to the master's perfect will. And so this battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. With respect today to our loved pastor, Friend of the gospel, sojourner of truth, of delivering and expounding God's word. One of God's soldiers who understands what it means and how it feels to be a Present this lovely array of 
floor presentations that have been sent by various ones. The staff of range comes at this time. Flowers have a way of saying those things which we find words to and how to put to express. As Hart says to Carla, forgive me if I mispronounce your name, Mishka, and the rest of the family, our heartfelt condolences and deepest sympathy, love, Somalia, that is Tom, Tori, Corey, and Alon Alonzo, Frank, Frank, Franco. I would have never got that. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Franco, so very beautiful, the beautiful wheel, the beautiful wheel. Another beautiful arrangement, expressing love and sympathy. We will always remember you, and it comes with so much love, from Veronica with love. And I didn't know where 
to turn. But oh, I would put on this song by Whitman Houston. And it said, when all around me falls, and I don't see my way at all, I will go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the rock. So I encourage you to think that turn your cell phones on and you record some songs. Like Jesus keep me near the cross. Like pass me not a gentle savior. Like I am bound for that promised land. Come and go with me to my father's house. Like there is not a friend like the lowly Jesus. And I assure you, you will find rest, you will find comfort, and you will find peace. God bless you is our prayer. Amen. Well, let's give the range staff another hand. <laughs> if you have your Bibles, today there's a word from the Lord. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of John. Very familiar text. We honor God and Son into the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost. The pastor Brian on the drums and Sister Bell and Virgil. To the range staff, to this bereaved family, friends, members of Macedonia, we honor you today. John 14 chapter, starting in verse 1. If you have your Bibles, you can find it there. And I'm going to do this today uh, for Sister Anderson. Uh, last year, we fertilized her mom. So, because she liked Kirk Franklin, and I'm short like Kirk Franklin. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I, I'll do this for her. I've gone through the fire yeah. and I've been through the flood. I've been broken yeah. into pieces, yeah. seen like a flash from above. But through it all, I remember.
we know not whether thou art. And how can we know the way? This is the part I love so much. It says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father. Oh, y'all gonna help me preach it. I feel it in here today. Except by me. You may be seated. Uh, musicians in the presence of the Lord. That was a good place if we were in an 11 o'clock type service we could worship them because I know that that's what uh, Sister Anderson would have done singing those type of songs. She, she had to stay in the state of worship. And so today family and friends it may seem like a day of sadness. It may seem like a day of grief and a day of mourning for many of us today. But I want you to know today that God made us to have relationships with each other. And when relationships are lost, when they are lost, we, we feel pain and sometimes we hurt for a long time. It doesn't feel good to lose a loved one. But even when we find ourselves in the valley of the shadows of death, we can have a peace that surpasses all understanding because we know that God is with us. Is there anybody in here can testify that I know the Lord is with me today? That there is comfort in knowing that God is with us no matter what life brings our way. The 23rd Psalm says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. You can rest assured today that God will never leave you, nor will he forsake you, as long as you trust and depend on him. Don't let your hearts be troubled today. You may ask, Pastor Bailey, how can you say that when death has occurred? You may say we are going to miss our loved one. We're going to miss her. So how can you say let not your heart be troubled? Well, the truth is that death is all around us. And when someone close to us dies, it, it brings it that much closer to home. It becomes a reality that death can happen at any time and to anyone. Can I preach it today? But Jesus gives us comfort in knowing that when he leave, when we leave here, he has a place prepared for us. Don't worry because God prepared a place for Sister Anderson today and he has a prepared place for you. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled, for there is a place I am preparing for you. These are the same words Jesus told the disciples prior to his sentence to death. Jesus was talking to them about going away, and it was troubling to the disciples. After all, nobody wants to lose anyone close to them who was a part of their everyday life. It doesn't feel good. And Jesus gets to the disciples. He gets them ready for something they probably never imagined they would have to face. And that is his suffering and his death. And after spending so much time with Jesus and receiving his instruction, the disciples went out to have to learn how to live on without him. And it wasn't going to be easy. We know, we know that it's not easy living without a loved one. The disciples were going to lose their shepherd, the person who covered them and taught them so much. And not only did the disciples have to deal with his impending death, they would have to witness his suffering. No one likes to see their loved ones suffer. And so there was a heaviness on the disciples' heart. Jesus knew the disciples' heart for trouble because of the things that they were going to witness. He knew they needed to be encouraged. And Jesus told them not to let their hearts be troubled. In other words, he was telling them, don't worry and don't be sad. And he wanted them to be happy 
He gave the disciples something to look forward to as they faced the difficulty that was soon to come. Jesus gave his disciples hope for tomorrow. He had something to look forward to. Jesus gave the disciples comfort in knowing that he was going to prepare a place for them so they would be able to see him one day. And today Jesus has given us the same hope he gave his disciples. He has given us something that we have that will help us run on a little while longer. Verse 2 tells us that in his father's house were many mansions. Yes. Isn't it good to know that Jesus has a prepared place for us? Yes. His preparation will not be in vain. He has prepared a place for us and in due time we will possess it. We have something to look forward to after we have fought a good fight and finished our course and after we have kept the faith. The Bible says that eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard and it hasn't entered into the hearts of man what God has prepared for those who love him. Is there anybody in here to love the Lord today? And I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to what God has prepared for me. If I don't get my mansion on this side of heaven, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. The Bible says that he has a place, a prepared thing. He didn't say a room or apartment. He didn't say a condo, but he says in his father's house, there, there are many men. So I'm looking forward to one of those days when I'll be in God's mansion. For we all, my brothers and sisters, I want you to know, for we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But it was on that old rugged cross that Jesus won the victory for us. Look at your neighbor, look at your neighbor and say, we all have sinned. Yes. Oh, that neighbor looking funny at you. Look at your other neighbor and say, we all have sinned. God doesn't leave us stranded. God doesn't leave us stranded on what seems like hopeless circumstances. He sent his own son, Jesus Christ, into this world to be our substitute, our covering, our shelter, and most of all, he's our comforter today. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He died on the cross. He shed his blood for us that we might be saved. Jesus paid for our sins on the cross. And all we have to do is believe in him today. Jesus accomplished the mission when he was resurrected. He went away not in defeat, but he went away in victory. Jesus went away to prepare a place for all of us who trust in him. Oh, what a place it would be. There'll be no more sorrow. There'll be no more pain. There'll be joy and peace. The book of Revelation, the 21st chapter, the fourth verse says, and God will Wipe away every tear from my eyes. I wish I was some church folk in here. Yeah, yeah. In this life, in this life, we all will have to face hardships one day. And if you haven't experienced any hard times yet, just keep on living. The old deacons would sing a song, if you haven't had any rain in your life, just wait a while. No one is exempt from the trials and the tribulations that come with life. But if you take the Lord with you, he will bring you through. Right. Jesus knows our sorrows and he knows the wounds that bleed deep down on the inside. Jesus is our refuge and our strength, a very present help when we need him the most. He'll nor will he forsake you. My brothers and my sisters, take shelter and take cover in Jesus Christ today. A place has been prepared for you. 
And Jesus is the only way there. I feel like preaching like it's Sunday today. There is no other way. Jesus told his disciples, I am, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except for me. Nothing else will save you from your sin and rescue you from death. Not your good works or your good ways. Not your wisdom or your high education. Not your money or your earthly possessions. Only Jesus can save you. The song said, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So this morning, as you deal with the loss of Amber Anderson today, I want you to know, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Because he'll never leave you. Nor will he forsake you. You have a friend in Jesus. Is there anybody in here today can testify that I have a friend in Jesus. When I needed him the most, he stepped right in on time. You can lean and depend on the Lord in your darkest moments. He gives us peace that surpasses all understanding. It's a peace that will keep us up when our hearts are troubled. It's a peace that will surround us when our hearts are heavy. Have confidence knowing that Jesus prepared a place for you one day and where he is we can be there also you see they nailed Jesus to the old rugged cross and he stayed on the cross all night Friday and all day Saturday but early one morning he got up with power in his hand is there anybody know the Lord got up with power he said, oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Jesus won the victory, and there is a crown of righteousness waiting for you. There's a crown waiting for you. So just keep fighting the good fight. Finish your course and keep the faith. Eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard and it hasn't entered into the hearts of men what God has prepared for you. If you can do me one more favor, if you know God's prepared something for you, why don't you give God a praise? Give God a praise. I dare you to stand on your feet if you know if it had not been for the Lord on your side. Where would you be? Where could you be if it wasn't for grace and mercy? If it wasn't for the Lord who's been keeping you, give God a praise. He's worthy. Ain't God worthy? Won't God fix it? Won't God put food on your table? find confident rest in Jesus because he's the way he's the truth and he's the life if you haven't already accepted Jesus as your personal savior today would be a good day you may say well preacher I don't feel like walking up to the front I ask you to because I'm not looking for membership for Macedonia but I'm looking for membership to make it to heaven Today, if you're not saved, today, if you're not sure that if God was to come back right now, 
You need to change your heart. And change your life to God. He will give you the peace that you're looking for. He'll give you a peace that the world can't take away. A peace that will sustain you in the midst of your sorrows today. And Jesus will be with you in whatever trials life may bring your way. And Jesus has a prepared place for us. And you will be there if you're connected to God. Jesus is the only way to get there. If you want to go there, all you have to do is trust and believe in God. Be encouraged today, family, and let not your heart be troubled. Come on, give God a praise as it stands on now. Praise God. Therefore, as much as it has pleased the Almighty God, in His wise providence, to take out this world unto Himself, the soul of our deceased sister, Amber Lynette Anderson. We therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. For henceforth, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labor, and their works do follow them. God, we thank you for the visitation of your Holy Spirit. And God, we thank you for this family. God, we ask you to be with this family as they progress through the week, God. God, keep them in perfect peace with their minds stayed on you. God, guide them and lead them. And God, let them know that earth has no sorrow that Jesus cannot heal. So we say thank you, God. God, we praise you, we give you honor. And as we leave this place, never from your presence, we ask you for traveling grace. Guide us and protect us. God, thank you for the food that has been prepared. God, thank you for the hands that prepared it, God. But most of all, we thank you for the hands who purchased it. God, we love you. We worship you. Son of the living God, in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. We just like to let you know that the family has prepared a repast for you that will be held in the fellowship hall that's downstairs of this church and you are all invited to partake 
We take this opportunity once again to thank the Reverend Bailey and the Macedonia Church family for all that they have done to ensure today that you have had such a wonderful service of memorial uh, memories for our dearly beloved Amber. And to this family, the staff at Range thanks you so very much for allowing us to take care of you during this most difficult time. And in the words of the late matriarch of the Range General Homes, the late M. Anthony, Range would have said, good night, our beloved Amber. Good night. We're going to see you in the rapture some sweet day. At this time, we're going to ask that when you stand, if you choose not to go to the repast, please go immediately to your cars where there will be no gathering in the parking lot at this time. Please stand for our recession. Thank you, Sister Virgil and Reverend Bright. He knows my name. He knows my name. No, my name knows my name. 